Uh, I'd like to uh, uh, introduce uh, Susan Nichols, who serves as the Lunder Education Chair at the Smithsonian Art Museum. And uh, Susan is here to share a few uh, uh, of, the, of the many really wonderful distance learning programs that are available at uh, the American Art Museum. So welcome, welcome Susan. It's nice to be here. I typically go to museum conferences, so it's nice to see the other side of the, uh, of the uh, providers. Um, as James said, um, our museum, which is just a metro ride away, should you have an evening free, we're open till 7 o'clock. Um, and uh, we have, um, among other things, in addition to our face-to-face -face programs for a variety of audiences, a distance learning program, which I'm going to talk about today, this morning. Um, of all the people on the staff, they opted to include me, who's probably the least tech literate, but I know that you're all sympathetic to that. Um, with um, our collections, we tell the stories of American history, and um, our collection is entirely separate from the other Smithsonian, the other 19 Smithsonian museums around the world. Uh, like many of our museum colleagues, we have recognized the distance learning uh, excuse me, is uh, tremendous opportunities, and we have uh, used it for formal and informal um, presentations. Our two museums, as I mentioned, were just uh, a metro ride away, and the one on the right is American Craft, opposite the White House. Um, our website, um, AmericanArt.si.edu, is a hub of information that allows visitors to deepen their knowledge while they explore. In order to reach our visitors of varied backgrounds and learning styles, we've created educational materials and interactives that allow them to contribute their own materials. They can interact with our artworks in a way that's most comfortable for them. One way is picturing the 1930s. We have a very large collection of um, uh, 1930s art. And this introduces visitors to museum artworks and gives them a chance to create documentaries that demonstrate their understanding of content. Our primary audience is high school students. As the visitor explores through a 1930s era movie house with pop-up commentary by museum experts, the visitor, he, she, can collect primary source materials, music, documents, um, images, sound, sound, and a web-based digital video editor allows them to create a digital documentary, which is then added to our website. Uh, we have, uh, for a number of years, offered student podcasts. This provides a platform uh, for third through 12th grade students to interpret works of art from our collection in their own words and audibly. Podcasting provides students a springboard for strengthening their research skills, again, using our online resources, building connections between American art and their humanities curriculum, and contributing to the larger conversation about artwork. It also gives teachers another uh, platform for assessment. And finally, the man in red, uh, our art signs online resources broaden the reach of our ASL in gallery tours, ASL American Sign Language, research and written by deaf volunteers like the man in red. These video casts present um, their interpretations and reflections on art from our collection. The program in the gallery is bilingual in the sense that it's voiced for hearing people but led by a deaf gallery guy, so it provides them with leadership in the gallery. We've extended that to our online resources by taping them in our video conference room, um, which is signed, so we have to caption it for the hearing. And then we also have it video, I mean, um, verbally described for um, blind visitors. So it's extended our reach for audiences with <coughs> accessibility needs. Our museum closed for two years in 2000. It took six and a half years to complete the renovation. And our docents and staff seized that chance to begin video conferencing to keep our, their practice on point. We use room-based H323 protocol 
to connect our core of 12 volunteer presenters with learners around the world. We do that in, through two programs. One is Artful Connections, uh, where we reach uh, K-20 students, teachers, senior center people, summer camp folks, library patrons, ALA, and hospitalized uh, children in hospitals in 42 states, Canada, and Panama. Since 2004, we've been able to reach 41,000 people this way, folks who we prefer them in the museum, but realize that's not possible for the majority of Americans or other folks as well. Um, with our Department of Defense program, that's Department of Defense Education Activities, we've had a contract with them since 2005 and video conferenced with about 16,000 dependents. Those are students of American military personnel on bases around the world. Um, our audience there is art uh, classes, uh, grades K-12. Artful Connections, which is the name of our um, distance learning program that's not the military-based one, has a mission to serve more people next year with the highest quality possible, and we refined our focus with a new informal mission statement for this program. We're dedicating our reach to the two to 20 uh, grade audience, as well as lifelong learners, Outside Metro, we have a Beltway obligation. So if they're within the Beltway, they have to come to the museum. We don't distance learning off or don't offer that. And if it's outside the Beltway, we do. Um, again, visiting in person is better than distance learning in our personal needs, uh, our personal perspective. But we appreciate and use the services of distance learning. Um, we are dedicated to cultivating a core of um, active volunteers, increasing the core we have, whose instructional style is inquiry-based. They leverage the interactive power of video conferencing to have transcontinental conversations with the students and the adults. That's the same mode of um, visitation, of mode we use in our galleries. We're not a lecture format, we're a conversation format. Um, and then our content, uh, as I mentioned, is linked to common core and national standards for students with an emphasis on history and language arts. That's especially strategic. Um, art is being marginalized in American schools, and our collections speak to um, um, language arts and history uh, without any press at all, push. We use our artworks as uh, primary and secondary resources and model uh, cross-curricular teaching uh, with our students and our teachers. For example, this is an artwork from our collection. And um, the questions, the way we engage the students and the teachers um, in the galleries is identical to the way we engage them in the uh, video conference. Um, what is the relationship between these two people? And what do you see that makes you say that? So we're looking for clues, making observations and interpretations from those observations. In fact, the painting was, and then we sort of feed them information. So in fact, the painting was completed in 1776. Uh, these people are grandmother and grandson. Um, do they represent um, opposites, old, young, England and America, England and the colonies? And what has uh, Peel, the artist, done to make them look that way? What choices has he made as an artist that gives you the impression that they are old, young, interrelated, and then if you draw the metaphor further, uh, Britain and the uh, colonies. How might all this relate to the American Revolution? Well, this is the type of approach that we use in our video conferences to leverage learners' existing knowledge and encourage them to construct their own deeper understanding of our artwork and the time period in which it was um, created. The book that the boy's pointing to <clears throat> um, is called um, uh, The Art of Speaking, and the page he's pointing to is Hamlet's soliloquy. And the first line of the text is um, pretty self-evident in terms of the questions that uh, America was raising at the time. Did I mention you can see this yourself by taking a metro ride? 
Um, we've had a number of interactions, um, professional interactions with um, uh, your group. In February of 12, we conducted a multi-point video conference with Internet K-20 libraries um, at 16 different sites. In September of 2012, it was a busy year, we conducted a multi-point conference with schools in Wisconsin, Maryland, and Pennsylvania with support from Magpie. And using artworks from our Civil War and American Art Exhibition, still available should you be on the Metro and choose to go, and then going to the Met, uh, we had 75 students examine how America's artists represented the impact of the Civil War and its aftermath through landscape artwork. Rather than picture scenes of battle, the landscape and genre paintings discussed during this video conference and in the galleries are chosen for their aesthetic power in conveying the intense emotions of the period. Here, for example, is George Bernard's photograph, Ruins in Charleston, South Carolina. The photograph was taken uh, in 1865. In October of 2012, we reached out uh, to a member meeting in Philadelphia. Uh, we have perceived benefits of video conferencing and our next steps. For one thing, for us, video conference offers a platform for discussion of American art, history, and culture. It allows students to virtually visit our museum and exercise critical thinking skills. For us, it introduces or builds on areas of study in their classrooms. And it can be tailored to the classroom needs as well as grade level. Obviously, it extends our reach, and as a national museum, we have an obligation to um, reach um, Americans wherever they are. This is our current offering, a current menu of offerings. We're looking at refreshing this menu with three to five new topics to replace those that are requested here most often. We're soliciting suggestions for new topics from teachers, um, which topics would best serve their needs, and we encourage any educators you know to contact us or access our Survey Monkey survey, or Survey Monkey. Um, we offer our video conference programs Monday through Friday, 9 to 4 Eastern Time. They're free of charge. We advertise them on uh, the CILC, Center for Interactive Learning and Collaboration, as well as our website. Again, FAR sites must have access to video conference equipment using H323 protocol. And we cannot Skype due to um, federal um, security policies. I need to leave because we have a memorial service for one of our colleagues, but I want, to know, I want you to know that you can contact um, the email address here for any questions you have, and you can always video conference us. Thank you. Join me in thanking Susan. Mm -hmm.